Hello there and welcome back. The May numbers are out from the Toronto Regional Real Estate Board and I am here to break them all down with you to let you know what is going on in the GTA housing market. So please stick with me on the other side of this intro to find a little more. Hey everybody, it's Rob Marciglio here as always with another GTA Real Estate Recap for you all. Gonna dive into all things real estate. Uh, I want to start with a little story from my experience in the last month, um, then we're going to go into what's happening with rates, and then a little recap for kind of all the markets. Stay tuned because it's a fun new presentation style, got some nice charts for everybody instead of the spreadsheets we've been going through lately. So to start, like I promised, a little story about just an example of how the market is changing. I know you're hearing a lot about it, about the slowdown, but hearing boots on the ground examples can sometimes be helpful. So uh, I'm working with a few couples right now, fortunately, in the city of Toronto. So couple number one, we put an offer on a place that we get a sign back on. And when I say a sign back, the seller looked at our offer and said, hey, we wanna work with you, but we just wanna change some terms up. Great. Doing our due diligence back and forth. Long story short, the deal didn't end up working out and we've decided to step away for a little bit. But this is what's gonna shock you and why I wanna share this story the listing agent actually came back to us with a sign back a week and a half after negotiations ended to try and get us back to the table for more. So buyers, you do have some power now for sure. I know the numbers don't point to a buyer's market yet. They don't even point to a balanced market in terms of kind of the old metrics. Uh, months of inventory has to be three for it to be considered balanced, but this market in certain pockets is acting like a balanced or a buyer's market. Example number two of my buyers having some successes lately. Once again, a uh, new couple I'm working with. First time out, it was just supposed to be a, hey, let's go see some inventory. We're not even gonna put an offer on anything today. This is just to get used to the experience. It's your first time out shopping for a home. Home number three that we look at on the day is a price change. It had been listed low in an offer night situation. They didn't get the number they wanted, so the sellers decided to put it back on the market at a higher price. My clients saw the potential in the home, really loved what they were seeing and said, Rob, we wanna try and put an offer in. And we wanna make it conditional on financing, inspection, and insurance for the full five days. Now, if you had have brought that proposal to me in January or February, it's your job to do what this buyer wants. You have to represent their interests. You have to put in the conditions they want in the offer. But I would have been very honest and said, guys, this is kind of like a snowball's chance in that hot place down below, if you know what I mean, H-E double hockey sticks. Uh, but this time I said, you know what, let's go for it. Uh, the market is definitely shifting. We got that offer accepted, less than the asking price than they want with the full five day conditions. I guess this is a message to sellers and to buyers. Buyers, you have more power in your hands now than you did prior in, in certain pockets. Sellers, we need to be adjusting our expectations a little more realistically, um, both in terms of price and in terms of the offers you're gonna be getting. The market is changing, you just need to be aware of that. Okay, so story time is over. Let's get into some of these market numbers. And I think to understand what is going on in the market, we need to look at what has happened with mortgage rates recently with Bank of Canada overnight rate announcements. So let's start with that. Okay, so as you can see here, this is back from June 1st uh, last week. Uh, the Bank of Canada increases policy interest rate by 50 basis points and continues quantitative tightening. So down here in the second paragraph, we read inflation globally and in Canada continues to rise, largely driven by higher prices for energy and food. In Canada, CPI inflation reached 6.8% for the month of April, well above the bank's forecast, and will likely move even higher in the near term before beginning to ease. So if we know the Bank of Canada, we know that their mandate is to manage inflation. They want to keep that at around 2%. The only tool they have in their belt right now to combat this is overnight rate hikes. So that's why we saw a 50 basis point rate hike. We're going to see another one probably in July. Um, they've pretty much come out and said, you know, we're going to be aggressive with this to battle that inflation. So that's just something to keep an eye on. What do these rate hikes mean for you? Um, let's take a look at some specific examples now. Um, just based on, we're not gonna look at the variable rate which is affected by the overnight, but we're gonna look at kind of five-year fixed rates and what they're doing right now as well. Okay, so looking at Rate Hub, we see five-year variable, five-year fixed, and three-year fixed rates. I wanna just forget about this best market rate section and go right down to our big five. Um, you can see that the five-year variable rate, these are all up those 50 basis points from last week pretty much. 
Um, so, you know, the least expensive five-year variable rate mortgage you're getting right now, the product is offered by TD, that's prime minus 0.55. The five-year fixed rate, again, uh, CIBC looks like it has the best offering at 4.42%. Let's think back to January. These rates were down in the 2.7s, 2.8s. We're going to look at what that means in terms of your purchasing power in just two seconds here. And then you can see your three-year fixed rate mortgages as well, all posted here for the big five. To look at a quick example here of what this means for your purchasing power. Again, this is just rough in terms of uh, the numbers that I'm using, but I'm assuming that somebody has an annual gross income of $150,000. Uh, monthly loans cost them uh, kind of $500 a month to service their debt, uh, using a gross debt servicing ratio of 39%. Based on that 2.84% rate we were seeing back in January, somebody who is buying a home at you know 25 year amortization, 2.84%, they could qualify for a mortgage amount of say 815,000 just as an example, what happens now, five months later, when rates are where they're at now on the five-year fixed side? So again, I'm running with the TD numbers here. Um, we went from 2.84%, uh, that was the January example, to now where we're sitting at 4.49% for a five-year fixed rate mortgage. And you can see that the amount of mortgage that you can qualify for is now down to 685, 817. So that's a drop of roughly 16%. So you've lost 16% of your purchasing power um, just based on rate increases alone, assuming all other variables stay the same. And again, that's why I think we'll continue to see uh, prices declining, especially if five-year fixed rates increase in the short term, which I think they will just based on this chart that I'm going to show you next. So again, this is the um, Government of Canada's, uh, this is their benchmark bond yield, the five-year yield. And you can see here a recent spike in that bond yield. So it's up to 2.96%. In looking at the patterns of the increases, the last few kind of big, like I'd call this a big hike in rates, and then I'd call this a big hike in rates, you did see a little bit of a softening in this bond yield before rates continued to go up to that next level, a bit of a softening here up to the next level. I looked at this little section here as that bit of a softening, and I thought maybe we're heading to another level. Pure speculation on my part, uh, that's kind of why I feel these five-year rates still have some room to increase. Uh, stay tuned later on for a special interview that I'm going to do with my mortgage professional, uh, Sergei Modulevsky. We'll talk more about what he sees the market doing and where he sees it going. So that's your little recap on where mortgage rates are at. I hope that's been a helpful little breakdown for you. Now let's get into how it's all shaken down in the numbers themselves. And as I promised, we got some fun charts to go through this week, not just spreadsheets. Okay, let's start it off with the chart we all love, and that's the median sale price in the GTA. And you can see, as promised, fancy charts for everybody this year, uh, this, this month, my apologies. Uh, so we have the Toronto Freehold in red, Toronto Condos in blue, Durham Region in orange, York in this beautiful purple color, and Peel in black. So for the month of May 2022, you can see where prices are at right now. You can see everybody's declined from the month before. And I've also just kind of given you an idea of where the market is at in terms of where was it at the peak and where is it now. So you can see that the market with the biggest run up was Durham region and it's definitely had the biggest drop off in prices too. Uh, you know, Toronto Freehold had a pretty decent run up, so did York region, so did Peel, and those are all start starting to taper off. Um, gradually, the condo prices went up. Uh, they actually, like I said, peaked in March and then now they've gradually started to taper off too. So. I don't think any of these market segments are going to be immune from rate hikes and rate changes. I think we're going to see declines all across the board through the rest of the year. I do think that the periphery markets being the suburbs of Toronto, so York, Peel, and Durham have more to go still and probably some more aggressive month-over-month -month declines. You can expect to see the Toronto freehold and condo markets start to decline. Maybe condos a little less just because affordability, that lower price point. Any buyer demand that's out there, people that are being priced out of uh, the freehold market will default to condos is what we usually see. Here's a breakdown as to what that looks like. So from the peak, again, I didn't put the month because the peaks were different for Toronto condo, but you know, almost 1.6 for median price point down to just over 1.4. That's down 10% from the peak. Toronto condos down 5.3% from the peak. Durham region down 21.3% from the peak. York down 14.8% and Peel down 15.6%. And then as promised, I wanted to show you 
kind of the year over year percent change in prices. So what this kind of chart here represents is the percentage higher from this year's price compared to last year's. So you can see Peel in January 2022, prices were almost 40% higher than they were in January of 2021. That gap has closed now to 12.2%, let's call it. Even if you're gonna round down, maybe we use Durham as an example, you know, almost 40% down to about 10%. That's a 75% decrease from the top to where prices are at now. These numbers will creep closer to zero as the year goes on, and then they will get into the negative. And we'll, we'll keep this chart updated for you and, and come back to this every single month to take a look at this too. Here's another one for, for you, and this is the uh, sold to list price ratio. Again, this, this line here, this green line represents one. So this means if, if everything was right at one, the list price is what you'd be paying for the home to be sold on average. This is just kind of an indication of the heat of the market. I'd say on average, if you're seeing all these numbers way above one, that's a pretty hot market. Once you're seeing them get down close to one, it's more of a balanced market. If it's getting down below this one number, you're getting into more of a buyer's market. How about our total sales so far this year? So from January to May of 2021, comparing it to January to May of 2022, sales are down, let's call it on average 30% across the board, 26.2% uh, and 26.9% in the Toronto markets. Durham closer to that 30% at 298 York Region has really hit the brakes in terms of uh, sales. The sales activity slowed way down up north of the city, 37.4% uh, down, and Peel right around that 34% down number as well. New listings aren't down by quite as much uh, year to date. So again, January to May 2021 versus 2022, you're down 12.6% in the Toronto freehold market, 3.9% in the condos, down 5.3% in Durham region, you are down 12.5% in York and you're down 9.6% in Peel. I know I've talked about it in earlier videos, but let's take this with a grain of salt and remember that we're seeing a lot more suspensions and terminations on listings this year. And a lot of those are then being relisted and then inflating that kind of new listings number. So let's take a closer look at just how many suspensions and terminations there are this year compared to last year as well. So here are those numbers. Again, Toronto Freehold is the only market segment where the percent change in suspended and terminated is actually down from last year at this time. So it's down about 4.1%. Toronto Condos up about 4.4%. So again, call it a bit of a wash. Uh, th those, those are pretty much, pretty much even from where we were last year, I'd say. But look at the periphery markets. Again, the ones that have taken the biggest hit in terms of uh, median sale price. So Durham Region up almost 50% in suspensions and terminations. Uh, York Region up 15.9% and Peel up 21%. Now we'll get into kind of the pace of the market. So these are average days on market. You can see going back to last January, just kind of where the demand has been. So Durham Region was extremely hot and you can see that even still their average days on market has stayed kind of below everybody else. Um, you can see, remember condos were a little, a little cold in the pandemic, people, wanted more space, wanted to get out of those condos. Um, that's changed a lot. You can see the big change where we are now versus where we were um, kind of at the beginning of last year. Um, again, I think as the market continues to shift, we'll just continue to see these average days on market increase. Next, I wanna hop into months of inventory. And this is just to give you an indication as to where we are this month versus last month. So. We have 31% more inventory in the Toronto Freehold market, 52% more inventory in the condos, 22.6% uh, more in Durham as a whole, 23.9% in York Region as a whole, and 36.2% more in Peel as a whole. So again, as these numbers start to creep closer to three, that's like the traditional balanced market. So technically you could call York and the Toronto condos, a bit of a balanced market right now. I get that this is a kind of a big bird's eye view of an entire market. You need to really chunk it down and, and look at your area specifically. Um, I'm more than happy to do that for you, but this is just to kind of give you an idea of, of where the market is moving as a whole. So here's our uh, showings per new listing, and this is a good indicator of how fast the market is moving, how much buyer demand is out there. Um, you can see the Toronto Free Old Market hasn't moved too, too much from 14.7 showings per new listing down to 12.9.
this past month, uh, with the biggest decrease happening from, from April to May, uh, rate increases may be affecting people. Uh, Durham region, that's been cut in half pretty much since the start of the year. A lot more interest back in January, down to 13.8 showings per new listing right now. York region is down 25% from 20.4 to uh, 15.2. And Peel is down, you know, just a little more than that 25% from 22.8 showings per new listing to 15.2 now. Offers per new listing is tricky because it does lump in properties that didn't get offers, properties that were canceled, all those things too. But again, this is just to give us a kind of percent change indication. So, you know, Durham region, again, down by more than 50% from the start of the year in terms of demand. York region down by just less than 50%. Peel down by more than 50% from the start of the year. Toronto down by roughly, you know, uh, call it 30% from, from earlier this year too. So we are seeing a decrease in interest from buyers on properties, a decrease in activity, and we will continue to monitor this as the year goes on. So that's the market recap for you. I hope you enjoyed the new layout. Please let me know in the comments below what you thought of the charts this month. Was it a more uh, desirable way to look at this information? I know it can be pretty dense to go through it all sometimes, but I wanna make sure I'm bringing you uh, top quality info, always with some good interpretation of the data as well. If you have questions about your market specifically, please never hesitate to reach out. I know I've enjoyed uh, conversations with some of you who have reached out recently, much appreciated. Um, I hope I can help more of you in the future. If you're enjoying the content, please uh, subscribe, like the video, share it with a friend who's kind of looking to learn a little more about any of these areas. And again, please reach out as always if you have any questions. Again, the next video to keep an eye out for is going to be my mortgage outlook video with my mortgage partner, Sergey Modulevsky. Uh, you know, if you have any questions, put them in the comments below or, or reach out and we'd love to cover those topics in this video for you. That's going to be out in the next week or so. So again, please stay tuned for that. And until we speak again next time, stay safe and cheers.